Hello, everybody, and welcome um, this afternoon to the Royal Holloway Talk on Discover Management with Marketing. Um, my name's Alice, and I am a Widening Access Officer for Royal Holloway. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm shortly going to pass over to our student ambassador, Nadia, um, who's going to be taking over the main part of the presentation. But I just wanted to run through a few little bits of admin with you first. Um, so just checking that you can all hear me okay. Can you all just type in something in the chat function, please, um, to let me know that you can hear me? Just a yes would be great. I can see we've got still quite a few people trickling in. Just checking that you can all hear me okay. I've only had a couple of yeses. I'm hoping, yeah, okay, we're getting loads more through now. Fantastic. OK, thank you very much. Um, so you might have seen there when you're using that chat feature that you can um, select who your message goes to. Um, so you can either select it to all entire audience um, or you can select it to just me. Um, I will come under Royal Holloway Schools. So when you're getting involved in the session today, um, you can choose who that's going to come to. Um, and if it's just for Nadia, if she's asking you a question, feel free to send it on to me if you'd like to. And I can always uh, send that over to her. Just to let you know that this session is being recorded and um, so we can always send you a recording of the session at the end if you would like to um, and as well we'll give you our email address if you wanted a copy of the slides and um, so don't feel like you have to make any notes or anything like that. Hope you just get a lot out of this session and really enjoy it and it's going to give you um, an insight into what it would be like to study um, at Royal Holloway or at university um, to look at management and marketing and then obviously the title of today's session is advertising in the post-digital world a threat to our privacy so some really really interesting topics here today okay so i'm going to pass over to nadia now um nadia are you there can you hear me okay hi yes i can hear you Fantastic. So I'm now going to go on mute um, and just let me know if you did a thing. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So um, hi, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself first. So uh, my name is Nadia. I am a final year management with marketing students studying at Royal Holloway University of London. So today I'm going to give a talk about advertising in the digital world. Basically, how advertising in today's age can be a threat to our privacy. Now, before I start, let me tell you a little bit about Royal Holloway. So as you can see on the picture on the right, Royal Holloway is located in a small town called Egham, which is in Surrey. It's not that far to get to London, only 40 minutes away by train. There are also other places to go to that are close to the university such as Windsor Castle, I would usually go there with my friends and we would do shopping or uh, go around Windsor Castle. There's also Staines where we usually do shopping as well. And there's also a very beautiful lake called Virginia Water, which is only 10 minutes by walk from campus. I would usually go there with my friends to have picnics or usually I go there for runs because I really like to work out. And um, the picture on the left is a map of our university. It's really nice that everything is on campus. What I mean is that everything is so close to get to, like the library, the lectures. And if you are living in halls, if you plan to live in halls, it's really close as well. I have a friend who literally lives, her, her dormitory is literally next to a department building, so it's very close to get to and yes and there's also like a lot of nature surrounding uh, the campus as well okay so these are just more facts about royal holloway so royal holloway is ranked 22nd top uk university and 88 percent of students say that they are satisfied with their university experience and there are around 11,000 students that go here. And also, there's actually quite a lot of international students, which is part of the reason why I choose to study here. It's just nice that there's a lot of different people from different backgrounds, cultures, religion. Um, I just really like learning new things from people, basically. And there's also loads of sports clubs and societies. There's over 110 sports clubs and societies at this university that students can get involved in. And uh, the university itself has a mix of traditional and modern. So the founders building, as you can see, there's uh, the picture of the building um, that has the orangey color. That's the founders building. Um, 
and it's very traditional. Um, there's Founders Lecture Theater, there's the library. I really love studying in the Founders Library because it always gives me this Hogwarts vibe. As you can tell, I'm a very huge fan of Harry Potter. Um, and yeah, and there's also the modern ones, such as the apartment buildings or the new um, modern library that Royal Holloway has. And lastly, Royal Holloway is also ranked as the most beautiful university in the UK. So, a little bit about my Royal Holloway journey. I've split this part into four sections because there's just so many things to talk about. Let's start with the first one. I absolutely love studying at Royal Holloway. This is just a picture of me and my friends in the snow. We had a lot of fun that day and Found, like found these buildings look so beautiful in the snow as well. So for studying, I spend around eight hours every week for lectures and four hours for workshops. So in total, I spend around 12 hours a week for studying. If you don't know the difference between a lecture and a workshop, basically a lecture has more students in it. So let's say there's 200 students in a lecture theater and there will be one lecturer explaining. Um, in lecture theatres, you don't really engage much with the lecturers, as in you can't, re you can ask questions, but because there's so many students, it's difficult to do so. That's why there are workshops. Now, workshops uh, are usually only 20 students, so you get to focus more, you get to engage with your friends, ask questions to your workshop tutors. And um, this, uh, the second picture is just a picture of me in my very first lecture at university. I still remember how I felt that day. I was so, so excited. And oh, also, apart from lectures and workshops, I also need to do my own independent studying. So in between classes, I would usually go to the library to revise, read and do my assignments. Okay, so university is not all about studying. There are loads of other things to do, such as joining a sports club or society. I've joined so many societies and sports clubs while I was here. Um, for example, in my first year, I joined archery. Again, I'm a huge fan of the Hunger Games. I've always wanted to learn how to shoot arrows like Katniss Everdeen. And um, it's really nice, like you don't have to be an expert as long as um you have the interest and you want to learn people are so friendly here like they'll teach you from the beginning and i've also joined harry potter society we uh we had a yule ball together we also played quidditch and we pretended to fly like we imagined that we were flying in the sky which is pretty fun um but the only one that sticks with me until now is the southeast asia society so um I don't think I've told you yet, but I am an international student. I'm from Indonesia. And um, it's just nice to know that there are people in this university that are from my country or a Asian countries. So yeah, um, in, in this society, we do loads of things together. It's very fun. We do games night, movie night. We meet to make food together. We sometimes travel to London as a day out or to eat more food. And um, by, joining, by joining a society or a sports club, you can also become part of the committee. So in my second year, I was the secretary. And now in my final year, I am the president of Southeast Asia Society. So it's nice that you'll, you'll learn, like you have fun with your friends, but you also learn skills like leadership skills and all of that. And although there's COVID going on, we still run events, but they're just virtual. So we do virtual games, virtual movie nights, or sometimes virtual like cooking together. But yeah, it's really, really fun. There's also part-time jobs that you can get up yeah, that you can get involved in while you're studying. I used to work as security in my first year. I don't really have a picture of it, but it was the best, like the it's so fun. It's such a fun experience being a security. What I had to do was I had to protect people, not even people, they were my friends. I had to protect my friends, uh, make sure that they're safe, handle cues, um, and yeah. And then the next part-time job that I did was I worked at the university shop. That's just a picture of me sanitizing the shelves. I also work on the till from time to time. Um, apart from that, 
I work as a student ambassador where I give campus tours and uh, I basically work for the university if they need my help. And being at Royal Holloway and experiencing all of this, experiencing part-time jobs, how to get a part-time job and uh, experiencing society, studying here, it makes me want to share this experience with everyone else out there who might be interested to go to a UK university or to Royal Holloway. That's why I created my own YouTube channel where one of my contents is basically about Royal Holloway and I upload these videos around once every two weeks. Um, but yeah, it's just, I want to share this experience with everyone out there basically. And lastly, friends. Now, there's so many ways to make friends in university and they say the friends you make at uni are long lasting friends. To be honest, I was a bit nervous at first, like it's scary, like I don't know people, I've never been to the UK in my life, but there's just so many ways to make friends and everyone is so friendly here. Like for example, this first picture is a picture of me and my flatmates. So I used to live in halls in my first year and this is just a picture of us um, about to go to the summer ball. Basically the summer ball is an event at the end of the year where students celebrate that hooray like studies are over assignments are done let's have fun and yeah that's just a picture of us and i'm still friends with them today right now i'm sharing a house with my previous flatmates and the second picture is uh, me and a friend from work so that's another way you can make friends people from your part-time jobs or from your society and the picture on the right is me and my course mates. So um, me and my course mates, we usually plan study sessions together in the library, we would meet up. And this is just a picture of us going to the Lake District to do camping. Okay, so now let's begin. Um, so the other day I was on the internet about to subscribe to an online workout website called Less Mills. Um, I think a lot of people know what Less Mills is. It's basically this workout website where you can work out from home. I mean, what better way to stay active and healthy at home during the pandemic because gyms are currently closed. I didn't subscribe straight away. I needed time to think about it because it was expensive. Then later on throughout the day, I opened my Facebook account and I saw this advertisement. It's an advertisement of the workout website Les Mills. Now to get you thinking, please respond through the chat function if this sort of thing has ever happened to you. Have you ever searched for something on the internet? It can be a product or a service. Then later on, when you open your social media accounts, you see an advertisement of those products. Please respond through the chat function if you have I'll give you a couple of seconds to respond. And also, if you have any examples of what sort of advertisement happened, please do leave it in the chat box as well. I would like to know. OK, so many of you have said yes. Um, do any of you have any examples you would like to share? Okay, while I wait for that, let me just explain. So advertisements in the digi digital age is more advanced compared to when it was back then, where people just use newspapers, brochures, billboards to advertise. Basically, everyone gets the same advertisement. Now, nowadays, advertisements are targeted like the example that I just showed you. So how did the advertisement show up on my social media account or our social media account? This is because your, your browser or web page you're looking into uses cookies. It's not cookies the food, okay? It's basically this cookie is a small piece of data stored on the user's computer by the web browser while browsing a website. Cookies were designed to be a reliable mechanism for websites to remember stateful information or to record the user's browsing activity. Basically, cookies are there 
to track what you're doing, like your behavior. So for example, you're really into um, nature stuff, like you're really into camping gear and bicycles and all of that. You will get advertisements about these certain products. Like they wouldn't give you an advertisement that is unrelated to you. Um, so I can see there's an example, Ikea. Furniture keeps coming up for me when I close the website. There we go, see? Dog training tips. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm guessing these adverts showed up because you've searched it, right? Sportswear, I'm sick of it. <laughs> okay, so um, you must be really into sportswear that you get those advertisements. Um, but yeah, so apart from the web browser, the social media accounts also have these cookies. So if you have Facebook, when you signed into Facebook, you have basically agreed to their terms and conditions that their apps also uses cookies. So yeah, those are basically the cookies and um, that's just a notification that a website uses cookies. You probably have seen it before. Um, so yeah, next slide, please. So this targeted advertising can be good for many people. Yes, for us as consumers, it benefits us because we are seeing relevant ads, ads that are interesting to us, ads that we possibly want to buy the products and services. And to say at the same time, for companies, it benefits them as well. Instead of spreading flyers and spending a lot of money on a lot of brochures to everyone who some might not even be interested in it, tag targeted advertising allows companies to be more efficient and hopefully saves costs. And also, if consumers like the advertisement, there's a possibility that they would purchase these items, right? These, this means companies will get more profit. It's a win-win situation for both parties. However, targeted advertising can be a threat to our privacy. So have you ever talked about a product loudly? Well, it doesn't have to be loudly, but basically near your phone. And suddenly you get advertisements of the product you were just talking about. So for example, one night I was with my friends, we were really hungry, we really wanted McDonald's. We didn't search about it on our internet browsers, we were just talking about it. And then the next day I saw an advertisement of McDonald's. Like, this is so scary. It made me wonder and concerned whether my phone is listening to me all this time. Again, through the chat function, could you please respond whether this has happened to you or not? I'll give you a couple of seconds. If you are brave, I would like to see some examples. If you have any examples of this, have you ever wondered if your phones are listening to you or your Alexa? Oh, one second. I need to turn off my Alexa because Sorry. my Alexa is listening to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get adverts for Royal Holloway from this webinar. There we go. There it is. Again, targeted advertising. Restaurants, yes. I get restaurants all the time as well. TikTok, mm -hmm. that's a very good example. That's a very good example, yeah. Especially on Instagram. If you guys have Instagram, usually you'll get the, these sort of adverts. So actually, the reason we keep getting advertisements that we are talking about is because we have agreed to the terms and conditions of these apps on our phones and we have allowed them to listen to us so we have allowed our phones or any digital thing that you have in your house to listen to us like alexa so for example 
um, for Apple products, we have agreed for Siri to listen to us. Or if it's Alexa, if you have Alexa in your homes, this means Alexa is listening to us all the time, 24 seven. Some people are afraid that if artificial intelligence such as Siri and Alexa listens to us, they will provide our personal information to the government. So now I know some of you may say, so what? I don't mind businesses or the government knowing about my personal life. I have nothing to hide. I've never committed a crime. Why do I need to be afraid? That is true, to be honest. I used to think like that. However, we can never know what might happen in the future. So this is an example of a scandal of personal data being taken. So three years ago, there was a scandal called the Facebook Cambridge Analytica data scandal. It was a political scandal in which the personal data of millions of Facebook users were taken without their consent by the British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica. Analytica. So say you have a Facebook account, all of your information there were taken by this company by them without your consent. And um, this company sells these data to political campaigns to in America. And these political campaigns can know the predictability of how many Americans are going to vote for Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, who are the people running for uh, plan to run for president at that time. If these political campaigns know these information, they can learn what to do to change people's mind to vote for the other one. So for example, if the information that they received was most Americans are more likely to vote for Donald Trump, the other side who, who are supporting Ted Cruz, they would be like, okay, we need to change our tactics. We need to influence the minds of the other people to, to vote for Ted Cruz. So, yeah, this is one of the reasons why protecting our privacy is so, so important. We want to limit the power we give to businesses and the government. Also, the more someone knows about us, the more power they can have over us. Personal data is used to make very important decisions in our lives. It can be used to affect our reputations. It can be used to influence our decisions and shape our behavior. It can be used as a tool to exercise control over us. And in the wrong hands, personal data can be caused to cause us great harm. Now, that's one of the reasons why privacy is important. Another reason is because we just want to respect individuals. If a person has a reasonable desire to keep something private, it is very disrespectful to ignore that person's wishes without a compelling reason to do so. Also, as you can see on the picture above, the Google's director said that users nowadays are now demanding greater privacy. So we live in a digital world with loads of social media, but we want more privacy. And this includes transparency, choice, and control over how their data is used. Yes, I agree. I want to know what my personal information, what my data is used by businesses and the government. And I think you you guys too, right? Um, so companies need to value what people want. Therefore, they must warn people that their website might use cookies to collect their data. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Some websites do not even tell their customers or the warning sign is very vague. According to the BBC, you can see the picture on the bottom of the slide. Only 11.8% of the sites meet the minimal requirements of the GDPR. So the GDPR is basically an organization that protects our data and they make sure that our data is safe. The rest have very unclear consent use of cookies, such as pre-ticked boxes, which I find really weird. Like they're asking for our consent, but it's already ticked, burying, Burying is like, um, so yes, they have a warning sign that there's cookies, but you can't see that clearly. It might be covered with an advertisement, for example. And there's multiple clicks. And this last one is really weird, tracking users before their consent. So they're already tracking us and suddenly 
a warning that this website uses cookies uh, appears after we're done with the website, which I find really, really rude. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, privacy also enables people to man manage their reputations. How we are judged by others affects our opportunities, friendships, and overall well-being. So, for example, we need to be really careful on social media because some companies, employers, they search our names on Googles um, and make sure that if if they want to hire me, they want to know they want to make sure that I'm a good person and have not been involved in any crimes, for example. That's why privacy is really important. Although we can't have complete control over our reputations, we must have some ability to protect our reputations from being unfairly harmed. Knowing private details about people's lives doesn't necessarily lead to more accurate judgment about people. People judge badly. They judge in haste. They judge out of context. They judge without hearing the whole story. Privacy, therefore, helps people protect themselves from these judgments. I'm going to give you an example um, of this, uh, the story of this school teacher that um, basically happened because of a lack of privacy. Basically, she was on holiday. She posted a picture of her drinking some wine and a beer on her Facebook account that was private. However, one of her friends leaked this picture to the head of school and to many other parents. Now, these parents saw the picture and they were like, oh, I don't want um, a teacher acting like this, teaching my kids at school. So as a result, the teacher was fired from the school. This is really unfair for her because, well, first of all, she already made her Facebook account private. And second of all, yes, her role is as a teacher, but she also has a life going out, um, going on apart from being in that school. So as you can see, people make very bad judgments about her without knowing the whole story. This is why protecting our privacy is very important. So is there anything that we could do to protect our privacy? Yes, of course we can. One of the things that you could do is to disable your artificial intelligence on your phones. So for example, if you have Apple devices, you can disable your Siri. I know it's nice sometimes to just say, hey Siri, do this, hey Siri, do that. But say um, if you're talking about something that's very, um, how do I say it, very private, very secretive, just make sure that your Siri is disabled. Um, you can also turn off location tracking. Oh, that's my Siri. Sorry about that. See, Siri is listening to my conversation again. <laughs> um, you can also turn off location tracking. Turning this off will prevent you getting advertisements when you are near a store. For example, if my location tracking is on and I go to um, somewhere near Costa, uh, I would probably get an advertisement from Costa saying, hi, come to Costa, we have a deal, this, this and that. Um, but if you turn it off, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get these targeted advertising. You can also disable your microphone for certain applications on your phone. This way, you won't get targeted advertisements on your applications. Lastly, be careful of sketchy websites. These are usually websites that have the vague cookies notifications or most likely no warning signs at all that it is tracking your behavior on that website. So, that is the advertisement in today's age. Many advertisements are uh, use artificial intelligence and targeted advertisement to ensure a success advert. But what about the future of advertising? The future of advertising is actually already starting. U.S. retailers such as Walgreens and Kroger are starting to adopt facial advertising in their stores. They use a smart shelf which can detect a customer's age, gender, and mood when the customer is purchasing. The smart shelf can also detect where the customer is looking and detect their facial expressions when facing the products on the shelf.
by gathering these customer information from the cameras, the customers can be targeted with relevant and personalized advertisement. So for example, if I am in front of the smart shop and say I really hate Coca-Cola, and when I see the Coca-Cola bottle, my facial expression, expression was like, uh, no, I don't like that. This is valuable information for them. It means, for them, it means that they would not target Coca-Cola adverts on me. Whereas if I see something I like, for example, like um, Fanta, and I purchased it, they will keep um, giving me uh, targeted advertisements about Fanta. So will this be a worse threat to our privacy? Have we given consent for these companies to scan and record our faces? What do you guys think? For our last activity, I would want you to debate whether the smart shelf idea would be good for us. Which side are you on? If you are pro, explain to the chat function why you like this idea, why it would be good for us as a society. And for those of you who are against it, explain why you think this is a bad adver advertising idea. I'll give you a couple of seconds to respond. I have to say it is a very good idea, but are any of you against it? Do you think it's bad for us or for the future? I'll give you guys another 20 seconds, then we'll start again. Okay, so we're getting a bit of responses here. Um, one of you are saying that you are against it because they are using our faces and information for their benefits. That is true, but is it not for our benefits as well? That means we'll get advertisements about the things that we like. What do you think about that? Another person says pro means you will only receive the advertisements that are relevant to you and means businesses will increase sales. Yes, I like that idea, that's correct. But again, they're scanning our faces without our consent. Another one said pro, but a good thing about it would be that they can help catch criminals. Ooh, yes, that's actually a very good idea. Less crime rates. Con, what if you want to try new things? That's a very, very good point, actually. Um, there's another thing I've learned in my course called the filter bubble. It's basically about how, because of these targeted advertising, we keep seeing the same things again and again, and we are basically inside this filter bubble. And yes, I agree with you. Sometimes it's also nice to try new things, things that are different which is why we need to pop that filter bubble. Con might be difficult with face masks. <laughs> yep, for the time being, yes, that's correct. <laughs> oh, wow. Thought, how would it work with children as they can't give consent to this? Yes, that is true. That is actually true, but usually I'm guessing if I don't think child like how old are the children? I'm guessing if they're really young. No, nah, actually, they could still buy it, yeah. I guess you'll need parents' consent for that. Yeah, that's that's really good idea actually. Beautiful thought. But yeah, these are really, really good ideas, guys. Honestly, um, to be honest, personally for me, there is no right or wrong. Like some of you, some of you are 
pro, some of you are con. I think both ideas are really, really good and it has its ups and downs. Of course, having this smart shelf has its own benefits for companies and for us as consumers, but also at the same time, we need to be very careful and aware of the consequences. It is a risk that we're willing to take. Therefore, we need to do a lot of research. We need to read the terms and conditions carefully and only, only trust services that have a high positive reputation. We do not want to go to a dodgy smart shelf, for example, and has low ratings or low reputations. Um, but yeah, um, really good guys, really good. And um, so yeah, in, that's it from my talk. If you find this topic interesting, you can actually learn more about it at university if you take the business and management course. Um, these are just some of the modules that I take that discuss this kind of topic. Um, so just a brief summary, um, the advertising and promotion module basically taught me a lot about advertising, the ethics of advertising. On my one of my assignments, I actually had to make an advertisement video, which was really, really fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, another one that discusses this is social media and networks. This module taught me about so social networks and social media platforms from multiple perspectives. And uh, the next one is consumer be behavior. I learned a little bit of psychology in here. So this module is basically teaching me about why consumers consume things. So for example, we why do we all want to buy expensive branded clothing when we can get a cheaper version, for example? What is it, this desire that us consumers have to have these branded things? So it's learning a little bit of the psychology. Um, next one, responsible business. This module is all about how to become a responsible person in a business or how to conduct a responsible business. It's about ethical things. It's kind of similar with marketing ethics, but in marketing ethics module, you focus more about how to be ethical in marketing. So for example, for example, the case of there's a bicycle that has a color of blue and pink but the price of the pink bicycle is more expensive than the blue one. Um, so is this ethical for the pink one to be more expensive? Like it's leading more towards girls, uh, they say. So yeah, we come like, that's the things that they taught in marketing ethics. And lastly, there's digital marketing, which is my favorite module from this course, because I am a YouTuber and I find some of the things from that module quite interesting. Like I've learned a lot about the metrics, like the things that I need to know from my YouTube channel and so on. And for careers, if you're interested about this topic, definitely, definitely go for the advertising agency. So an advertising agency is a business dedicated to creating the planning and the handling of advertising. So there are actually many roles within the advertising agency. I'm just gonna explain a couple of them. So for example, the creatives, the creatives are usually the people who focus on the creativity side of advertisements. They make sure advertisements look good, creative. Um, another one, for example, the strategy or the strategic planner. These are the people who make the plans, like adopt, like create the strategy for the advert, or they also develop and present strategic marketing recommendations for a range of clients. Um, Another example, technology. So the technology team usually provides the technology or has insights and knowledge about which technology can be used for the advertisements. So yeah, that's it, guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about Royal Holloway, about my university experience or about this topic, please do um, ask me. I'll, I'll be happy to answer you but yeah thank you so much guys i'll give you a couple of seconds if you have any questions OK, 
okay one of you asked how long is the business degree so business and management is three years in total um i want to explain a bit so in general there's business and management which is like the broader one then you can always uh specify if you're really into something a subject you can really spe specify like for example my one i i take management with marketing because i really love marketing like as i mentioned earlier i'm really into digital marketing marketing ethics and all of that so you can specify your course to these ones to these pathways there's other ones, for example, if you're into entrepreneurship, you want to build your own business, there's management with entrepreneurship. If you would like to be or would like to work as a human resources management, there's management with human resources. But all of this in total, it's three years. One of you asked, do you know what you want to be in the future? <laughs> wow, I actually have a lot of dreams, to be honest. Um, my ultimate goal, I want to be a lecturer in the future. So after my undergraduate degree, I would like to do a master's and a PhD. But on my way there, I would like to gain some work experience by working in universities or in companies. So I'd love to work in a marketing team or in a digital marketing. So um, the knowledge that I've gained from the modules I've learned or from my YouTube channel, I would like to apply that to these companies. And yeah, so that's what I want to be in the future. Do you want to do a year in industry or sandwich year? Um, so uh, since I'm in my final year, I didn't do a year in industry because I personally, for me, I feel like I've um, I've gained quite a lot of experiences, like I said previously, with my YouTube channel and I work as an ambassador and all of that. Um, so, yeah, I I would like to if I was still in first year, I would probably apply. But since I'm in my final year, I don't I didn't have the chance to do that. So after I graduate, which is in June, I am planning to work for a company straight away. Any more question, guys? I'm gonna um, jump in there as well and just say I've put in the chat um, quite a while ago um, the email address. Um, if you do want to ask um, Nadia or myself any questions that you don't want to ask in front of the group, um, the email address is schools. Um, so school with an S on the end at rhul.ac.uk. Right, I can't see any more question oh no there is one more question coming in um, Nadia the question is um after one degree can you go and do another degree um does that mean a double degree I think the person means like can you do a second degree after you've done your first I would assume ah I see um I'm not 100% sure about this if it's the same undergraduate degree I don't see why not I think you can yeah, you can. You can say, for example, um, so my stepsister decided to do a biology degree when she was younger. She graduated, got to the end and then decided to, she wanted to be a midwife. So then she did a midwifery degree. So overall, she did seven years of university. Um, so, yeah, you can do that or you can go and do um, a master's or a PhD if you want to stay in the same area. So, for example, Nadia could go on and do a master's in marketing or something like that if she wanted to enhance her education even more. Um, but it's completely up to you. Yeah, great questions. Okay, um, I think what we'll do is we'll leave it there unless there's any more questions coming through. Um, thank you so much to Nadia for giving up her time this afternoon to come and speak to you guys. Um, I, for one, found that insanely interesting and it's made me want to go and study some more um, about managing uh, management and marketing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, I've just had, there's just one more question come through. The person has said, um, I like psychology and business management, but I don't know which one to pursue in uni. Mm, okay, so. Any opinions, Nadia? Uh, yes, so some of my friends also are also into business and psychology. My advice to you, uh, why don't you have a look at um, management with human resources? Because a lot of things that are taught in human resources involve psychology. So that's one thing you could do or you can take a psychology course as well it's completely mm -hmm. up but both both 
work the same way, I guess. Definitely. I think there's a lot of crossover as well. And what I would recommend you do is you have a look, for example, at the Royal Holloway website or the prospectus and have a look at the different modules that you might be able to study and think, OK, which one is actually interesting me more? You know, what do I genuinely have an interest in and want to go and study or work in when I'm older? And I think you will have a bit more of a gut pull to one way or the other. Um, but as Nadia said, there are specific degrees where, that combine the two. Um, no, you can't do two degrees at the same time. You would literally collapse because you've got too much going on. So no, you just do one degree at a time. But as we've said, there are kind of different routes that you can go down. Um, for example, Nadia has taken more of a kind of a marketing focus to her degree. Um, so yeah, I hope that's really helpful. Fantastic. Well, it is a lovely sunny afternoon where I am. Hopefully you guys have the sunshine too. So I will leave you be. But as I said, please do get in touch if you want a copy of the slides or the recording or you've got any other questions. Um, really hope you've enjoyed it and taken something away. And thank you so much again to Nadia for giving up her time. Okay, I'm happy to do this. <laughs> Brilliant. Have a lovely afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.